Hello, it is Tuesday, February 1, 2022. Now, what I want to do today is something a little different. I'm going to type this, create a business. I typed it with one hand. <laughs> My name is Laura. I have a long technical background. And I like to help find the technical details and things. It may sound different than saying I have a long technical background. But this, what I'm doing right now, is a little bit part of my uh, pet peeve out in the world, I suppose, is, you know, to make sure that people understand what's do other details other than what is publicized in a lot of information out there. So... This is an official website of the United States government. Okay. Now, if you want to do anything anywhere that has to do with collecting money from another person by selling something to them, then you have to consider all of these things. It's part of how the country is run. And I'm only talking about the United States. I don't know how other countries do things in this manner. I can only reference the United States. So in the United States, you have different levels. You have the federal government, you have the state governments, then you have the local governments in your area where you live. Local means where you live. Maybe you are in an RV, which some people are, and you travel. So local is going to have to be wherever you physically are located. Okay. Um, so here, we're going to look at this real quick, right? So it says, build your own business from the ground up is an exciting opportunity, but it can also be challenging. Well, yeah, but not for the reasons you think. Follow the 10 steps from, from the small business administration to start a business. You'll learn about writing a business plan, determining the legal structure of your business and more. That's not the problem. That's the easy part. Avoid common mistakes and get advice from experienced small business owners who want to help. Local SBA partner organizations offer free access to mentors and trainers. You will need them. Yes. <clears throat> I would definitely say check that out. So, business funding options, tax requirements to start a business, business insurance, hiring business employees, consumer protection laws. These are all things that you have to abide by. Um, I mean, this is something you want, but like this, for instance, you have to get an EIN number, okay? And then you have to list that EIN number with the business name. The EIN number is going to be, li is going to be in the database at the IRS with a business name that's attached to it, and then that will have to have an address that's attached to it and a phone number probably too. But the idea is this is how it's done. So if you're at your home and you have your business at your home, then, you know, your EIN is going to be attached to the address that's at your home and the business name is going to be attached to your home address. Just say it. Um, okay. And that will be in the database because when they receive the tax return for that small business, it has to have the EIN number with it. And they have to have an address that's not a P.O. box number, I think. That you'll have to check with local law, with the laws. I, you know, there are more laws to look at for that. But there again, if you... I'm talking about ways of not increasing expense. A P.O. box or buying a, a business address of some sort, an UPS box or forwarding address, or all those things, they cost money. Okay, so monthly expenses, they cost money. So if you want to start a business, you have to think about those things. Why? Because you might not want the whole planet to know where you live. You, you have to trust the government with your address. 
attached to a business name. And, uh, yeah. Now, your address attached to your name is different. But if you want to have a business, that means you're reaching out to lots of strangers everywhere to be a customer, right? So let's look at this again. Um, get information on state-level requirements. So each state has adi additional tax rules, such as rela in relation to business licenses. And you have to get a business license because that state requires it because that's where you live. Now, I don't know about some other ones, but let me let me explain this first. Because of where you physically live, if you're in a house in a state, and that's where you file your taxes, and that's where you live, and you want to get, you know, start a business in your state, then your state may have business requirements. And we're going to look at this in a minute, state business resources. And then you have business taxes, energy tax incentives, and so forth. Business insurance. Some states require that you pay business insurance. Even if you don't have anybody, you know, no shop, no physical shops. Again, they're talking about physical locations. We're past that now. Many, many, many people have a business, and they're at home. They're not in a shop, you know. Um, but the example has to do with people that are in the shop. Well, people are not in a shop now. They're at home. Hire, as far as starting a business, I'm talking about entrepreneurs. I'm not talking about this. So let's look at how we relate to entrepreneurs. Hiring business employees, you may or may not do that. And even if you do, that's a sticky situation because you may be hiring somebody who's at another state. Uh, you're hiring them through a service. You know, you may not. So in order to do that, to protect yourself, you may want to hire them as an independent contractor. If you do that, then you're going to want to hire a lawyer that's going to create your documents to protect yourself. Again, security, you know, to your business. You have to pay for security in one form or another. So you want to protect yourself by getting all the proper paperwork together, the legal paperwork in case there was a problem, so that you could receive service from somebody who does something for your business, and you're paying them money for doing that, whatever that is. Okay, could be writing, could be... That's why services... There's, a, there's one thing that's called a marketplace and one thing that's called a regular service. So a marketplace like Etsy, right, or red bubble places like that are marketplaces or Facebook marketplace even those are marketplaces where well no not Facebook maybe I don't know hmm let's just stick to red bubble and Etsy for a minute just for a minute for the example so red bubble and Etsy both have a marketplace platform they have a lot of lawyers and accountants and you know laws that back them up to be able to set everything up the way they do and then they can have all these legal documents for the people who sign up to sell there and those people have to agree to all those legal documents in order to upload their stuff to sell anything with that said that means that the company like Etsy Whoever owns Etsy, which I think it's on the market now. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. But let's say someone who owns the company, they have all these laws and, and everything that are in the IRS system, that are in the state system, where they're registered. They have to register a business license somewhere. Whoever cr created Etsy, they must register a business license. And that business license has to specify what the business is about. And it has, they have to do it at the state level of wherever the business address, corporate address, is going to be located, I believe. Or, 
Well, this gets more complicated. But you do have to have some kind of business license on a legal level, and that costs money, right? So whenever you, se you the entrepreneur, you want to sell something through Etsy, right? Well, they have to have enough rules to allow you to sell something that will benefit you plus benefit them because they can't have a business that exists without paying for all of these things that you don't have to pay for. You don't have to pay a lawyer to set up the business. You don't have to pay an accountant to take care of IRS. You don't have to pay for those things through Etsy. You have to take care of your own personal sales and so forth. They have to take care of many sales <laughs> on many levels. So that's why it's important to accept and understand that these platforms have to charge either upfront fees or fees later upon the sale, you know, sale of the item or service and so forth. Um, because it comes down to the same thing one way or another. It comes down to laws, regulations, taxes, all that is going to exist. So no matter what uh, YouTuber, or I'm sorry, I don't want to say it in a negative way, but no matter how you, what you learn about starting a business and how easy it is to do all these things, you have to always consider that all these things are also part of it and you can't avoid it and they cost money. So when you upload your items, uh, when you upload like on Etsy, for instance, you don't have to go to your, it's a marketplace, okay? You don't have to go to, you don't have to have the business license to upload there. So you don't have to tell your state before you upload anything, before you make a penny, you don't have to go to your state government and say, well, I want to sell this stuff. No, you can just upload to sell it, right? And so then after you sell it, then you have a chance, you know, you have to use that money to pay your taxes with on that sale. You still have to pay taxes on what you earn from what you sell, okay? But you don't have to pay the upfront expense of a business license when you sell on a marketplace. But if you sell... If you use a service to sell something like Printful, P-R-I-N-T-F-U-L, you have to use Printful. Well, one of the ways you use Printful is on your own webs website. Well, if you get a website, then you have to put, you know, do a lot of other things that give up your privacy. Let's go back to this before we go too f much further into this. Um, let's look through here. Self-employment, working from home. Huh? <coughs> and there are a lot of laws that relate to consumer protection. Um, yeah, that's going to be very important. You'll be giving up your privacy because of those laws. Okay, tax information. Working from home. See, you have to have license and permits. Now, those licenses and permits, they might be listed online. And if they're listed online, they might have your home address on them. Therefore, you have to consider before you start your business, what you do, this is what you do, which we're going to look at. We're going to look at this real quick, and I'll show you. Instead of talking, I'll show you. Uh, home office deduction, you know, all these things to consider. <coughs> and then you have CDL and so forth. Okay, now let's look at here. Right? Let's pick a state. Oh, I don't know. California, I think, is pretty complex. Let's go to California. So let's pretend you're in a biz you're in California, you want to open a business, right? Checklist for starting a business in California. California Secretary of State Business Programs. Okay. 
Let's start here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, they're going to have videos and PDFs and stuff. Starting a new business. Prepare and plan. Secure financing. So they expect you to do all this right up front. Who can do this? Mm. Look. Oh my goodness. So before you care about all of this, the first thing you should do is care about yourself. Your security, your privacy, your, you know, you have to care about that first. Because if you don't exist, you can't do your business. I always said, if you're six feet under, you're not going to be able to do anything. So you got to care about being alive, secure, and safe first. California Secretary of State Business Programs. All right. Now, this is what I want to do. Okay, here's the Secretary of State, right? So, what they have on every, you know, this is for every single uh, state across the 50 states. You're going to be able to look at this. This is on their website. Whatever you can see, other people can see across the entire planet. The whole planet can see the information that you're looking at right now. Okay? Keep that in mind every time you look at something. Oh boy, cannabis, cannabis file. <laughs> so cannabis is legal. Okay. Now, what I want to do, this is a, this has a lot more information than I was looking for. What I wanted to look for, <coughs> guidelines to ac for access to public records. Hmm, they might have different um, information. Start a new business. Right. Thank you for your interest. Oh, they have all this again. Yeah, an entrepreneur can do all that. Okay. Let's say you don't have any backing from anybody. Right? Let's say you're just all alone and you want to get, you want to do this because you're so rejected and you want to do things your way. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so I want to search for step one, step two. Entity type, tax employee, family address, permit assistance. <laughs> uh, well, what I want to find is. Business search. Let's do business search. I want to show you what information's in here when you do a business search. Everything I'm looking at, the whole world can look at. Okay. Business entities, records, request form, name reservations. This is requesting a copy. Currently, information for these. General partnership shows the other entity types are not contained in the business search. Now, some states, look at this. Some states are protecting that from everyday people. Not from the government, of course. But from everyday people. Law firms, architects. These, these types of companies. Public accountancy firms and land survey firms, general partnerships, associations, and other entity types are not contained in the business search. I don't think that's quite fair. Those are actual large companies of some kind that um, people will need to search for in order to know how 
they need to know if they're good companies or not in good standing with the business. So you're going to have to go through this source here. If you can't find your business, you have to submit this request. So instead of saying that you can't search for that company, so that means you're going to have to know the name of the company. Let's say something you got to record. You received uh, some soliciting message or saw a campaign and you want to find out if the company is legit in California, you may have to go through this process. So let's, I don't know if California is the best idea, the best, uh, um, oh, I don't know. Let's put uh, something simple. Let's put Pizza Hut, just for the heck of it, right? Uh, let's say Corporation, right? Okay, we're just going to merged out, suspended, wow, active, dissolved, surrender, Delaware, California. Hmm. So let's look at this. This is somebody who owns a franchise Pizza Hut shop. Merged out. So they got rid of it. And my point here is this. It doesn't matter if it's active or not. Oh, image unavailable. Oh, see, they won't let you see the image. Huh? So let's go back. Well, let's look at the active one. Look. Okay, the active one, because it's a business. A agent for service of process. So every state's going to have these agents. It's going to have an address. That's going to have security at that address. <laughs> you know, it's going to be some kind of business building. Uh, entity address, e entity mailing address. So this one is using a service, which they have to pay for, by the way. This one has registration. All of this has to be paid for as well. So if I click on that. So the Secretary of State uses... They want a business address. They want a mailing address. You know, chief executive officer, secretary. So they're they're using you know there's somebody's name there, and they're using this same address, which is the name of the register. It's not the name of the person, I don't think. Yeah. Type of business. Pizza. <laughs> okay. Let's go back. Look at this again. Oops. Okay, there we go. All right. Domestic stock active agent for service of process. If I was to look this up, if I do this, no, nope. If I do this, it will probably come up as an agent, not an individual. This is how you do things. This is exactly how you do things. It's on Facebook. Uh, I don't want to go there because of my Facebook. Um, but... You can go there because of your Facebook, right? If you have Facebook, uh, you can go to that page and you can analyze it to find out more about that person, whether they're listed as an agent or whether they're an individual. Well, look at this. Okay. This is a person who lives. Look at this. <laughs> How safe is that if you're a woman? Oh, this is why people get harmed or shot or stalked or, 
because there's so much information available to find people. You cannot protect yourself. It's really complex. Well, I don't know about this. <laughs> um, the most, uh, um, hmm. Well, what was the address? Hollister and so forth. So let me go back here and we're done with that. Let's, um, it shows an address is my point. So we're going to have to pick something else. So let's pick up, um, I don't know. I don't know an address. Or I don't know if I can map it. Um, LSD. So if you know this information, you can type it here. I'm going to have to um, find a company. Let's go to... Oh, jeez. Um, let's go to... Um, shoot. I'm not sure if I can show you uh, what's public. California, it looks like they have some uh, laws in place to protect. I don't know if they have enough laws in place to protect, you know, individuals. I'm going to have to put some more work into this. And this is, this. I'm going to post this for now. And, I, you know, please leave your comments and let me know what more you want. But I also would like to help you uh, by s doing searches in here for you. If you are, you know, in a particular state and you want to understand what's on um, the Secretary of State business section before you, you know, create a business and understand what their requirements are and what the whole planet can see when they do a search because I can help you with that I can do a search on a business and show you let's say that you know I'm at a different IP address or whatever you know so I can show you from a perspective of somebody who's not you and at another location across the planet somewhere who can find business information and I can show you um, how that information is freely available so that when you start a business of any any kind, you know, you have to consider what information's in there, what address, phone number, you know, no matter what email address system, email system you use or whatever you advertise, you have to consider what the government has available for everyone else to see. So... And what you have to list with them and, and all this stuff. This is why it's very complex and confusing and political and expensive. So with that, I'm going to let this go for now and do more of this later. This type of uh, search and research. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go look up some businesses and we're going to research them. I'm going to try to find some good small businesses of some kind. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dig into this. All right, you have a good day. Thank you very much. Enjoy your uh, rest of the day. Happy February. <laughs> please subscribe. Please comment. Please, uh, I will be, I can do something, uh, by the way, a live chat with you if that's what you want. I'm not just doing a video and then going away. If you want to do a live chat and do some research, let me know. Uh, we will do that. I will arrange it. Um, I can't do, you know, an hour or two unless you would like it as a service. And then, of course, I have to, you know, submit that and all the forms, the legal forms. So if you want just a specific research to help you and to uh, take a look at this, then we can do that in a live chat. All right.
have a good one. Thank you very much. Bye.